to the German Cup final between Core and the Greyhounds here. We are playing on St. Marigles and we are casting from the allied side of the Greyhounds. This has been a, quite a long competition. Uh, lots of great games so far in this one. However, it all comes down to this match here on St. Marigles. From the left side of your screen, we have the Greyhounds in blue. They'll be playing as the allies. And on the right side, we have Core in orange. And they will be playing as the Axis today. This is the culmination of a lot of intense matches. All coming down to this one right here on St. Marigles. Now, this is a great point for the Greyhounds coming out of the start here. Allies do favor this point. You can see all the buildings on the left side of your screen. Giving a lot of nice shooting angles to get to. It also is a little closer to that side of the point. So expect the Greyhounds to make some progress off the start here. You can see already shots coming out on the top of this one. We'll see who takes this one and who takes the game though. Of course, core heavy favorites for this one. They are the best team in Hell Let Loose. However, anything is possible. Greyhounds are a really good team in their own right. You can see deployment coming here from the Greyhounds. We go back a little bit. Maybe Core snuck under the radar here. I'm trying to see where exactly they're at. They are making some cap progress. But not a many, not many deployments just yet into the zone. Greyhounds with a very strong deployment on the north and the south sides. Core focusing a little more just on the strong point here. Can already see, yeah, Crusader in there, Para leading the way so far. Core really putting an emphasis on that north side, trying to take control of this little town on the north here. Already taken out one OP, and now pushing a Lux into the fray. Core with a really dominating opening start here. Let's go on board with this Lux. He looks to get in the back line of the Greyhound and really do a number on the north side of point here. Core. Losing a little bit of cap progress. Uh-oh, that's not where you want to find yourself there. Right in front of the gun side of the Lux. Well, that's got to hurt. So that cap progress initially that Core had has faltered a little bit here, but they do have north control over the point. Also, pushing on the south, trying to get that south control too. Artillery is just absolutely dominating this early opening game. Crusader can't get anywhere close to point. Both sides, just the explosions are non-stop. Greyhounds, though, making some progress. They do have control of the strong cap here. That's only going to get you so much, though. On the north side here, Profex, Zim, Senseless pushing in. Soon going to be able to take out this. Oh, possibly soon. There is an OP here with dough picks in them. But once that OP goes down, it's going to be very hard to uproot Core from this north side. However, unless Core can get some more bodies in here and get some bodies truly challenging the strong point, I think Greyhounds might just have this midpoint here. Already is non-stop, absolutely non-stop off the, off the bat here. Now for how, I do not know, but Oreg is still alive here. He's going to have the ability to put down another OP. Now if he can get to the south end and cut this off, that would be a huge play here for the Greyhounds. Desperately trying to throw out smoke here on the north. This is really the linchpin, and you know what? The Greyhounds might just have done it. Looks like they're going to go up 3-2 and take a lead in this Greyhound Cup Final. Oh, sorry, Greyhound Cup Final. <laughs> German Cup Final. Apologies. And there it is. 3-2 off the bat. Greyhounds take the lead in this one. They have an absolute mountain in front of them if they want to hold on to this one and keep this for the victory and the cup. They did really well though. I mean, even though Core pushed so many bodies to the north side there, uh, the Artie was just absolutely devastating. Greyhounds did what they needed to. They needed to take the strong point and create a buffer on both sides. Now they didn't really get that huge of a buffer on the north side, but the Artie was so intense that nobody who tried to push south towards the strong point really got anywhere close. 
Uh, and now it's, it's a 50-50 battle in the north here, too. North is definitely one of the keys that the, the Greyhounds have to at least keep in a 50-50 in a battle here. They can't let Core get complete control. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be very hard, uh, especially with pressure from multiple sides. So far, so good, though. Lux is still kind of terrorizing the backside here. I wonder when we'll see uh, that Lux get taken out. Unfortunately for Rambo, his AT gun's not looking the right way. Uh-oh. AT gun gonna drop there. Looks like there could be maybe a Stewart. Yeah, there is a Stewart looking this way. 75 also falling back to deal with this Lux. Lux has... Its days are numbered, for sure. 75 going to peek him and take him out. Unfortunately for that AT gun, they're going to have to rebuild that to really fortify the front of the midpoint here on St. Mary Glees. Uh, as we're watching that little tank battle, Core have cleaned up the north side on the right side of your screen here. Going to look to push that squad into point. Also attacking straight on the front with Medini pushing up there. He's going to be looking to put a satchel down, maybe clear out the church. Cap progress falling for core momentarily. However, they have a lot of bodies trying to push into this uh, strong point in the mid here. It probably won't be denied for too much longer. Also on the south side, you can see they're pushing up really far core here in the orange. Very close to getting a surround onto this midpoint. Greyhounds are taking cap progress on the fourth point though. On Western Approach. What is going on on Western Approach? Nothing right now. It looks like it's just going to be some sector cap progress in the south side here. Who I was I was thinking Maynard might be a little closer than that. That would have been a certainly a crazy a crazy play to see. A uh, core really putting a lot of pressure onto this strong point though. Cap progress is starting. I don't see the bodies on the backside here from the Greyhounds to stop this cap. They really, really need to put some effort into reclaiming the backside where HP is and Chris and Kyle is. And if they don't do that, they're going to lose this point very, very fast. Some key kills coming out here. They still need to drop Sledge and uh, Nice here. But they have lost complete control over the strong point on St. Mary Glees. Yeah, just how aggressive that attack was from Core on all sides, uh, from the south, the north, and up the middle. They all pushed at the same time and completely overran the defenses. Now, from the back side, though, on the south at least, you can see Oreg, Sint, and Dopix pushing in, maybe to remove some OPs on the north side. Not so much luck. Milo's trying to sneak through here, maybe get an OP. No, he's going to get taken out by Profex. Kyle can't make it back to the strong point, and there's nobody with a satchel anywhere close. I think this is going to be Core taking the midpoint back. 3-2. Greyhounds had a really nice opener, unfortunately just couldn't stick the landing there uh, and reinforce their positions. The south side seems to be going okay, though. Uh, if the Greyhounds can just clear out those OPs and some of those troops down on the south side, they might be able to put some more pressure on mid here, but with the strong point completely in control of Core. Uh, it's going to take a satchel on the wall to clear that, and there's nobody that can get anywhere close here from the Greyhounds, unfortunately. You can see Artie from Core also. Not sure if that's Core or if that's uh, Greyhound. Saturating the midline between this bombing run is going to drop in the middle too. Unfortunately, no one's really there to get hit by it. Greyhound's going to try one last attack here to try to take back the midpoint. It's not look like it's going to be too successful. This is going to be a 3-2 flip with Core taking the midpoint. And just like that, Core take the midpoint and look to put some pressure. Now Calgan can get a satchel off here as the midpoint drops. If Calgan has a satchel... 
and he can get one off. It doesn't look like he does, unfortunately, there. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe Mach? All it takes is one sack on the outside here to absolutely clear out the, the church. Unfortunately, no. Oh, man, that should have been a prio here for the Greyhounds. They should have immediately looked to satchel that as soon as they lost it. With two or three satchels, that should have cleared out the strong point. Uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Not going to be the case, and they do end up dropping that midpoint down. It's all going to be about how quickly they can retake it. You can see on the south side here, Zoom drops, Vozlov drops. The Greyhounds have essentially taken back the south side of the point. Uh, now they need to try and hold that while they counterattack the mid. Now it's going to be even harder now that they also have to worry about their defensive point um, and the fourth point over on Maison de Creek there. They're not out of this one yet, though. There's still a big chance to come back. It's just, it's it's so it's such a necessity here uh, for one of the Greyhounds to at least get a satchel onto St. Mary Glees, the church there, to try and clear it out. Now, the position isn't too bad. They still have the, the backside position here. Of course, Artie is a problem right now. And another problem is the fact that Nero and Crusader have both rotated their squads back. It looked like... With the 116th Greyhounds had control over this south, but respawns and rotations coming in, uh, proving that not to be the case. What is going on over on the street here? Looks like Alpha might have cleared out a tank. The Tiger tank here. Is there a satchel down on the tank? Looks like only one left or two left alive. Not too sure if the satchel went down or not. No, it doesn't look like... Alpha had a satchel. Oh, that's unfortunate there for Alpha. Very, very unfortunate. Uh, let's check the map out to see how the defense is going. Only two Garys up on defense. AT gun also. A few squads back to defend the attack. They have a northern Gary set up here to attack from the north. And they have two or three Garys in their own sector here. Red zone Gary for this attack coming down. They're going to have to... Oh, okay. There's the satchel. Not getting everyone in the church, but as soon as we tabbed out of the map, you can see that satchel wiped out quite a few bodies. However, for the Greyhounds, they're really going to have to worry about core in their back line here. As you can see, core squads starting to sweep off the back line, looking to take out this northern garrison and push it down inside enemy territory. Uh, unfortunately for core, they, they have not realized yet that that garrison is a moot point because Zark uh maynard here they have a northern garrison now there is some screening defense from Bates here so he should run into zark not too long that's gonna have to reset that sweeping attack probably draw back a few bodies to take care of the northern gary here uh if we scroll a little bit further down to point here though kalgan wabi sir kartoff and belos all pushing in core does have a little defense up pretty much a 4v well two now since bommel's cleared out that whole house by himself Greyhound's going to have to make these kills count. It's all about these little firefights here. Mr. Pink goes on the wall and takes out Belos. Nice little individual FPS play there. Greyhounds are going to have to start winning some of these fights, though, in the city if they want to really pressure the strong point. Now, they have a lot of bodies concentrated to the east here in the middle. Uh, they are pushing from the north. However, that push is taking a lot of time. You can see Hayes and Maynard there not really putting any pressure just yet, which is allowing this sweeping team uh, with Sledge, Zim, Soviet, Pink, Saint, DNL, Nice to come down on top from the flank of the Greyhounds and put some pressure on here. It's these little firefights that are going to determine the next... A few minutes of the game now if maynard and hayes can get some pressure on mid that will relieve a majority of this pressure coming from the north side and draw them back uh, to point and behind point if that happens before the greyhounds lose their position here that might work but if the greyhounds have already lost this position on the front line it's going to be kind of a moot point now i don't like the positioning of all these greyhounds here looks like uh, jay thompson did die before he could get a satchel out though so it's not going to end up being uh, too costly. Not 
not a bad positioning though from, from the Greyhounds really coming back into this one. We can rotate down to the fourth point to see how Core's setting up for the attack really quick. But I mean, the Greyhounds are definitely not out of this one just yet. Setting up for the attack on Maison de Creek, you can see Mosh, Nero, Lucky. Lucky just gets clapped right there. There's a lot of defenders back, and I don't see a whole lot right now from Core setting up for this one. If we rotate further back, I don't see any recon. Nobody doing any sneaky sneak stuff as of yet. I'm sure that'll change soon. Judge Fabster coming up too. A little just probing attacks with squad leads. I'm sure we'll see a, a little more intensity on that uh, if Core can can clear their back lines here. That is not the case yet. Maynard has made it through the north side somehow, through Sharn, through Will, and through Bates. Close to point, however, it's so dangerous to put an OP up on the backside here uh, when you're surrounded. You're going to need to leave some boys to defend that. Uh, Tiger going down on point there. Looks like a victim of a satchel from Vozlov Khan's squad. Not too sure who dropped that satchel, but a nice kill on that at least. Haze it in the background too. Vozlov Khan in the back. This is going to be trouble here for Core. Core's not going to be able to put the forces they want on that front line. And even this little flanking maneuver on the north, they're going to have to draw some forces back. You can see uh, nice Zim, Bommel, Pink, Saint. These guys are all going to have to fall back to the strong point with this pressure from 116th. Uh, yes, they could continue on the front line here, but I think ultimately fighting off the strong point is going to hurt their chances. Now, I don't even know if Core has really realized the position they're in yet. There's so many members of 116th behind them. I think Lucky's going to figure this out. Uh, maybe Sturb and Profex will fall back to deal with this threat. The core is essentially lost right behind the point. Now, Lucky Gummy gets a good kill there onto Maynard. Looking for some more kills here. Gonna have some reinforcements in the form of DNL, but you no, know, Greyhounds are making cap progress here. Now they have to get the kills on point if they want to stick it. DNL is going to drop two. Vozlov and Alex both drop, and there goes the cap progress with it. I mean, it props to, to the Greyhounds, though, for really making a game out of this one. They are not uh, laying down by any means. They're showing their teeth a little bit here with this attack onto the back lines, and so far, so good. It's working. Now, this is going to be a tough battle. Going to need to win some of these FPS fights here if the Greyhounds want to stay in this uh, attack on mid. They're really important. They've got a few kills there. They're not getting any of the OPs, though. Not getting those OPs down on point. You can see Bommel spawning in, Steerbill spawning in. Zark might have a chance. So will Matic, but... It's it's a 50-50 right now. Every, every kill is so important here for both sides. I don't think Matic ended up taking out that OP. No, the OP is still up under the tree, so crucially not able to get the OP. Cap progress still climbing here for the Greyhounds. Oh, it is so close, though. Core is fighting for their lives right now on the midpoint. 50% cap progress and growing slowly but surely. Now, unfortunately, I believe... One, the Wabi, if you look at Wabi on the left, uh, right side of your screen there, I believe they lost their OP there. So that's going to be one OP down. But I mean, 116 still making cap progress here. Core not getting the kills they need to secure this point. And this looks like, for now at least, it might just go back. Oh, with, with each spawn wave that goes in though, the, the cap stops. It is so close. Can the Greyhounds make this cap work? They've thrown everyone onto it. Even the artillery is here now. They are stuffing the cap point with bodies. They are so close. 99% to cap. Can they do it? The Greyhounds come back into this game in the German Cup final. Yes, they can. It is 3-2 again for the Greyhounds. Wow. This is a game, ladies and gentlemen.
And already we're seeing a little bit of cap progress and pressure on the fourth point. Hayes is already here. Maddock is with him. Lux under a lot of pressure in the road there. Maddock going to get one kill onto Nero. Looking for Steiger too. Can he get the second? He can. Wow. Already look at this. Greyhound's pressuring the fourth point of core. Core needs to pull back bodies or they are going to be down 4-1 in this game. Wow. Hayes with amazing rotation here onto the fourth point. Let's see how well they can fight this one off on point. It's going to be one squad against two from both sides. Already getting a few kills there are the Greyhounds. They need to get this first wave down, though. They can't let any of these core boys back into the point here. Nero getting a kill on the south side. Hayes drops to senseless here. Only three left on point. Need to get some more kills here. Greyhounds need to get some kills. Oh, no. And just like that, they get cleared off the backside there. And already, Core are making some cap progress back on the mid. Nice try from Hayes here. Unfortunately, there just wasn't enough on point. Core bringing in a lot of bodies back. That looks, looks like they're probably going to be able to clear this one out. Uh, only one squad was back here to make that transition, unfortunately, for the Greyhounds. Not enough bodies, not getting enough kills. And uh, Core is going to secure their back line here pretty comfortably. Still, every little bit of pressure counts. Bodies on the defense for Core mean nobody on the attack. Now, looking back at the midpoint here, Core has taken back St. Mary Glees. Uh, Madini and Sledge are in the point. Really important here for the Greyhounds to be able to not only clear out their back line here, nice and lucky, putting in a lot of work on the backside, making life miserable uh, for the Greyhounds, but also to use those satchels uh, on the St. Mary Glees Church to clear it out when they have the ability. That's so important. So it cannot be overstated enough uh, having those satchels ready to go to clear it out. However, you know, Greyhounds have to continually put that pressure on the fourth point of core uh, to allow, you know, a relief on the back line, to allow the defense of St. Mary Glees to lift that kind of pressure you have. Because uh, once that pressure is there, it's, it's so hard to lift it. You just can't. You have to make them redeploy somewhere else. Now, pushing out a little bit here, you have Belos on the north side. Going to get a kill onto Lucky here. Not too bad there. Every kill counts, though, for, for 116th Greyhounds. Every single kill matters. And again, Crusader setting up on the north here. Calgan. I don't think Calgan knows about that position for Crusader. Surely he's got an OP with his attacking squad in the little north uh, patio set here. Such a crucial position uh, to control. It gives you close access to the north side of St. Mary Glees here, and it also prevents artillery. It's very hard for Artie to, to hit there. Here comes the core re-attack onto the mid, though. Only 26 minutes into this one. We've already had two changes of the lead. This game is going to be a marathon. We got two tanks on point right now for the Greyhound, 176, 175. They're going to do as much shelling as they can to keep this point in their hands. Some more pressure on the fourth point for the Greyhounds. Also, Core making a little pressure on the midpoint here, too. Both points. Seeing a little bit of cap progress. Airhead coming down on the north side. Looks like Core is going to be utilizing this airhead on the north to attack from the north. That is a, a, a common place for the airhead. Where you'd expect, it's very hard for artillery to land here. You can see Artie Mark is already going out for that airhead play. However, it's so hard to hit these areas with artillery just because of all the buildings. Uh, it, a lot of the Artie strikes will hit the roofs. We'll see if Core can make this airhead work off of Crusader's OP. Rambo GT is going to be the first one with the rocket shot available to him. Can he make it stick? He's going to push a little further. Jodakson in 1v1 there with Rambo GT. That kill is going to be important. Rambo gets the kill. Now, can he push this airhead? He has to push it very fast. Crusader going to spawn in again here and go over the wall. Oh, he just can't get to it. 
Can Rambo get the airhead? No! Crusader kills him. Can Crusader defend this airhead? It's gonna be so hard. It's a 1v3 right now. Crusader's gonna try the best he can. Mock pushing in from the left side right here. Crusader in a 1v1, a 1v3. Oh my god, it's so close. No, Crusader drops. Now where's the spawn? Looks like no spawn from the airhead. Crusader tried his best. He cannot secure that airhead there. Four, core. Core though, pushing some infantry into point, making a little bit of cap progress again. Tank taking some fire on point right here. Standing their ground, not letting. Too many infantry push in. However, Medini or Jay Thompson, looks like, I think Jay Thompson might have put that satchel down on the 76 there. Nice play from him. Really, I'd love to see a viewer called Calgan Chiefs. Really? Really? Someone made a, st uh, a Twitch account called Calgan Chiefs. Are you serious? I'd love to see a, a machine gunner in that back window there. Now, the smoke would negate that fire for a, a meantime, but... It would at least help with that southern push. That seems the only way Core is really able to get onto point right now is from the south. Core making some more cap progress on the midpoint. However, that just, it's going up, it's going down, depending on how many bodies are inside the sector. Now, Core really needs to try and stick inside the sector and clear out that north side. Now, if they can do that, they can probably retake this point, but as it stands right now, it's it's a 50-50 on point. Cap progress still increasing here for core. They have enough bodies in sector. Greyhounds not replenishing their bodies. Not getting some respawns into point there. Finally, there we go. A big respawn wave on the north. Looks like a new Gary is placed right on the north side of point. However, Greyhounds got to watch out because there's a tiger tank looking straight down this road right here. Oh, Calgan goes down. Maddox going to hit the dirt. Mabitze goes down too. The Tiger has a great, a great angle to just mow down anyone who spawns on that, uh, that OP. Another big spawn wave coming in, and we have some cow progress on Western Approach. Maynard, Zark, Vozlov. Ooh, this is a big push coming out from the Greyhound. They're putting a lot of eggs in this basket. And you know what? On the defensive side, they have not secured the point. Now, Cal Progress is falling on the midpoint. But this is a lot of bodies to commit to this attack right here. Uh, they've already lost a few bodies between uh, Raup, Will, and Judge. Toti also there. Uh, Vazlov is going to have a very hard time pushing across. I don't think they know about the forces from Korb coming from behind. This is going to be an ambush from behind. And it looks like that red zone Gary going down right now. Oh, what is that? Is that a red zone Gary? What is this? What are they doing over here? Now they're just crouching to shoot. So a nice defensive play here from Judge Fabster and Raup. Pushing onto the OP of the Greyhound attackers. Denying them the ability to push to point. Shooting them in the back. And generally just snuffing out that attack. Now can Vozlov get an OP closer to point? So can Maynard. Can they? If they can, that would be huge. However, there's Adu and Schnarr. To kill on point and you know what those are not gonna be easy targets now these are important 1v1s to win Schnarr is bush camping here he's gonna see Vozlov and take him out important 1v1 win there Schnarr's gonna see that OP oh he doesn't see the OP and the spawn wave comes in huge mistake there from Schnarr, just missing the OP there since Yadao and Kieran going to spawn in now. But can the Swadley get back in here? 
That has to happen. Now, Core is making more cap progress on mid, so this might be inconsequential right now if Core can secure the point. It's a pitched battle right now on point. Only Alex left alive inside St. Mary Tower. Uh, we need a Satchel. Satchel needs to come up right now. Anthrox also causing problems on the backside here. I don't know if there's going to be enough reinforcements to come in. Look at the south in the sector. So many bodies in. It looks like Core might even take this one back. 3-2. There just isn't enough bodies from the Greyhounds to, to defend it. Wow. This one is going to be an epic game. Now, the Greyhounds have to be very careful to fall back. They need to make sure that their fourth point has enough bodies to defend. Otherwise, it's going to be bad news bears on the backside for the Greyhounds. 3-2 for Core. They get back into the lead of this one. Oh, man, this is a titanic struggle for this Greyhound Cup right now. And you know what? Core are looking a lot better than they did last time. They have the south control right now. They can cut off the Greyhound reinforcements to point. Blue Terror pushing in the background right now. See if he can get a, a Gary on the backside. Take a look quickly at the map. You can see deep OPs, camping already. Um, Hazit's running back to get something set up on the north to attack St. Marigliese. Reinforced, not going to work out for uh, Greyhounds right now. You can see how split up they are. This is this is very dangerous here. These guys all staying up in here, not rotating back to the midpoint. Um, could be an issue. Now, the defense is looking strong here. As long as Chris can intercept Bluter if they see each other. That should be okay. Now, Blue Terry is not a squad lead, and that kill is going to give his position away, so they're going to know about him back there. Uh, should be able to commit some resources to taking him out. No no squad leads here for Core yet. Nothing set up. Nothing pre-ordained. Really just a, a titanic fight over the midpoint right now. Um, Greyhounds, though, have a decent position. Anthrox is still in this house. I don't know how, but he is still here. He's still on point. He's an absolute thorn in the side of this Greyhound team. Uh, really, the Greyhounds now, they have a decent position on the backside. Core is probably going to take a little bit of time here and absolutely make sure they've cleared their back lines. Not leave anything to chance. Anthrox is going off. Wow. I wonder if Black Swan will just be like, hey guys, we got to kill Anthrox in the building. Can we please just like commit everybody to it? Need every building, need every window. Um, because <laughs> he's not going down without a fight. Looks like a tiger is going to push in here and take out this Stewart. Nice little shot there of the kill from the tiger. Oh, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> he just, uh, he lets someone else do the work for him. Stewart, though. Baits the Tiger into a bad position. Wobby here with one shot into the back of the Tiger. Can he get a second? He should be able to here. Two shots in to the back. I think that might not have worked. I don't know. Did that ricochet? Didn't look like it hit. It looked like it kind of hit a collision behind the Tiger. Kind of a weird little animation there. Uh, anywho, Tiger takes some damage and falls back there. Nothing terminal in that threat. Uh, Core looking to secure this north side and look at on the back. Look at how many bodies they've committed to this. Crusaders back here. Bates is back here. Uh, Bottle Rock, Zark, and uh, Alpha are thoroughly getting cleared out here. Trying to fight to the last man, but definitely not going to be allowed to put that pressure. Oh, what a nade there. Was that Raup with a nade killing a whole squad? Down goes the OP. Last one gets clapped. And the, oh my god, that was a nasty nade. Six people at least dying with that one and, and that kind of clears out the threat from the back that was kind of what undid core last time allowing uh you know maynard to, to flank around the back side and get in there not going to be the case this time we'll see if the, let's check in the map really quick you can see yeah haze it already taken uh some some contacts near his op not going to be able to get that uh gary that it, they did have last time really everything is frontline right now for uh the greyhounds they do have two three tanks out so it's going to be a 75 and 276 is on the back line uh par pardon me it's another 75 coming out here but definitely not the same position they were in the first time here it's a uh, anthrox is still alive by the way that is his house this this broken house here in the in the the east side of saint mary glees will be forever known as the anthrox house he has held that house for the last 15 minutes at least 
killed everyone who's tried to push him right now. Hopefully we're not jinxing him with this. I'm surprised there hasn't been nades thrown up. See if we can see how he's holding this. Just an absolute madman. Where is he? <laughs> oh, some people talk about campers and bushes. Anthrox is the camper in the house. He is sitting behind this door and he is just waiting. An absolute terror. <laughs> His gun is poking through the door. <laughs> And he's just gonna rotate to another side and just camp over there. That's that's all his job is. Well, he pushes out looking for Zark, gonna get Zark there with the kill. Anthrox is a terror, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we can sneak out of the building right there. Uh, oh, finally gets taken out, Zero Hour. We missed it. We were too busy trying to get out of the building. So it looks like Commentator's Curse is gonna curse Anthrox there. He survives for a long time, creates a lot of havoc on the back line. Greyhound's still within touching distance here. I think if Core, you see Nero on the north side there, sorry, south side. If Nero, lucky one, can push in between the lines and get in between kind of the attack and the defense of the point, maybe they can pocket this, this group of Greyhounds here and, and remove them. However, you know, the flanks they've tried so far haven't been too successful. You know, Greyhound's still staying within touching distance of the midpoint. We're, we're over, we're 40 minutes into this one and it's not looking like a typical core game where they just dominate. You know, their average is a 30 minute game. We're already 10 minutes over that and they've already lost the midpoint twice in this game. You know, Greyhounds, uh, to their credit, are staying in this one. And I honestly think this could go either way. But we need to see some pressure right now. We need to see that soon. We need to see a second front open up from the Greyhounds. They need to push the north side, maybe flank around the back side and get some Garys up, get some OPs up, put some pressure on the point. Don't let Core really dictate this game. You can see already backline Garys going to be going up here. Uh, Sledge is flanking around to the southeast. You can see that drop. Werner Voss coming back in to help out too. That's going to be Werner Voss putting that down. I wonder if that's a red zone, Gary. Let's quickly look at the map right now. No. That's just going to be inside the zone right here. Nobody around to really see this one, though. Werner Voss is going to be able to get this up. And that's going to be trouble for the Greyhounds here. It's going to be a 1v1 Werner Voss versus Kyle. Kyle rotating for this one. I think... Kyle might be able to get here just before the first spawn wave comes in off this, if if Kyle even knows about this. So here we go with the attack from Core. Uh, in the next three minutes, Greyhounds have to put pressure in because that's when the first spawns are going to come down here. That's when the pressure will start to mount on the backside, and that's when Greyhounds are going to lose the ability uh, to attack and put pressure on. They'll need to use that for the defense. Now, Kyle might have a a boon here. Kyle sees the Gary, sees nobody. There's going to be a spawn wave, though. It's been enough time. There's going to be a spawn wave right here. Does he Does he see it, though? I think he might have. No, he doesn't. Oh, no. Kyle misses the Gary there. He's not up on the side of the fence to look it out, to spot it out. Completely misses the Gary. That Gary is going to enable spawns on the back line here. And this is dangerous. This is very, very dangerous here. Werner Voss sees that his Gary's hot, but I don't think he, he knows exactly where it is. Now, Kyle might have spotted it and just wants to overrun it and let other forces know where it is. That might be what he's going for. Not too sure. I mean, it's a red zone Gary, so for sure Kyle's overrunning it. Werner Voss is going to hear Kyle approach really fast right here. This is a very important 1v1. If they can clear Kyle off here, they'll get some spawns in. Werner Voss set up for a kill. Kyle comes over the fence. Werner Voss goes for the kill. Can't get Kyle off the top. Kyle survives. Gary spotted. Werner Voss misses the shot there. Rotating in to try and defend the Gary. He's going to check out to see if anyone's on it. They're not on it right now. Oh, and a one tap from Kyle. Kills Werner Voss. Is going to be able to get this red zone Gary. And just like that, a huge play from the commander here, Kyle, in securing his back line. Rotating back to the midpoint now. 
cool. The Greyhounds are doing work. Look at this. They're clearing out their flanks right now. They're forcing Sletch, Lucky, and DNL to push further into their territory. That's good. That's a very good play here. You got Mothy coming back from Recon also to try and help out. But this is a very important first step for the Greyhounds. Now, they don't have the ability to push behind and put that pressure on, but their frontline pressure is very good right now. You can see Soviet Viking patrolling on the north side does not want to let what happened last time uh, with that long flank happen again. Greyhounds need to maybe utilize some of these forces to push into point. I think they're getting a little stagnant on the front line here. Uh, core, they're getting kills on the core here. Zark just dropped Profex again, but they need to force some bodies in. They need to do probing attacks. They need to clear out some of these OPs where you can see Senseless spawning in there. They need to have some aggro, some assault, some aggressiveness um, to really put Core in their back feet because right now Core have uh, four frontliners, maybe five, six, if you count the guys on the, the south side. You know what? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven right now. So four more bodies. A core response coming in now, too. Okay, okay. We'll see how this develops, though. Uh, Greyhounds, I'd love to see some more pressure off the mid right here, though. I see some rolling already. Comments in the chat. Yeah, that's not happening, ladies and gents. It's not going to happen. Greyhounds took the point off the get-go. Core came back, took it 3-2. Greyhounds came back, took it 3-2. Core came back, took it 3-2 again. And here we are, uh, almost an hour into this one. And, you know, Core is having trouble. They're having trouble clearing out the back line of the Greyhounds. Uh, they're going to try again with another supply drop. It looks like the Gary of... Who is this? Well, hold the phone. Uh, it looks like Core have pushed their way onto point right now. And while Kyle and Rude are on the back lines looking for things, there is cap progress on point. Zoom, Scav, Falcon, and Willy pushing the point. Willy going to get dropped. Zoom here. 3v5 right now. Let's see how well the FPS skills can do. Zoom's going to drop one there. Pushing into the house. Kills Boda Rock. Clyke, Rambo, Redkun, and Oreg going to need to get some kills here uh, to balance out this point. Zoom going to drop there. Respawn's coming in. Scav the next one up here. Uh, second squad pushing up from core with Nero and Blue Tear. Chris and Mach need to collapse onto this point. Scav pushing in. Getting very close to the spawn here in the river. Yes, he clears the OP. Wow, Boda Rock's still going to spawn in. But can he clear Scav out? Now, Ulrich is alive for an opportunity for another O post. Zoom has a long respawn. You know, look at the long run he has to go from his OP. So that's not going to be pressing. I think Greyhound should be able to clear this out. Uh, but core pressure coming onto point from the west. And just like we talked about, the Greyhounds need to exert some pressure like this of their own on the point, either with a flanking squad, maybe an airhead, maybe some drops in the back line to distract a little bit here because the pressure is on now and it will not let up. Now, rotating back to the midpoint here, you can see core pushing out. Greyhounds getting a little too compact here. I don't love this. Uh, they're, they're very compact. Judge Fabster, lucky one, flanking on the left. Sledge flanking on the right side here with pink. Now, if the Greyhounds get pocketed, they're going to get eliminated from this, this zone here. They need to get wider. They need to push out, be proactive. They need to challenge the OPs on point, and that's not happening. Greyhounds are getting pocketed right now. Lucky one going to drop on the south side, get a kill there. Now, if Core can pocket this Greyhound push, uh, that is, yeah, that's going to be a lot of trouble here. North side doing okay. Uh, unfortunately, they're so far back trying to defend the core flank that they're not able to really flank of their own or, or exert any pressure onto midpoint. Uh, let's check behind the point here. No, nobody's back here. Nothing really going. I would love to see maybe an airhead play uh, on the backside here. 
supply drops being ordered in St. Mary Glees. Now you can see the flank coming up from Maynard and Hazed, but that's way too long. That's going to take way, way too long to get here. The pressure is already on. And like we said the first time this, this was tried, the pressure needs to come on before the Greyhounds lose the front. Because if the Greyhounds lose the front, then that means there's only pressure from the backside. And that is not going to be enough to take the point outright. You'll see these forces just fall back. Uh, it's very close to losing here. You know, the Greyhounds still have their spawns. But, I mean, it's a lot closer than that last time. And it's going to take at least four to five minutes for Maynard and Hazet to get there. Honestly, I think one of those... Uh, one of those squad leads should have taken a transport truck around the north side and just risk it. Because the issue is they just can't run there. It's going to take way too long. We'll see what happens. Oh, pocket is closing. Jackson from the south. Nice from the north with Senseless and Pink. And the Greyhounds are getting very, very compact here. I believe this is going to be the end of this push on the front line. Unless Sir Kartoff, HP, and Calgan... Well, they can. They killed on the front line, but here comes the attack from the back. At least two of the, the three OPs are going to be going down here on the back side when Core finishes this pocket off. A rocket? Is that a rocket? Is a dude shooting to the stars? He is. He's doing a pixel peek on Artie. Nice rockets. Unfortunately for uh, Adu, it does not land on anybody on the Artie. Still a nice little uh, look into the ridiculous peaks that come from uh, <laughs> from Hell at Loose. Uh, but like we said, the pocket has closed. Core has secured their defensive area here. And now the pressure will be turned up to 11 as they look to take the fourth point from the Greyhounds. Unfortunately for Maynard and uh, Haste on the backside, their rotation was not quick enough. You can see as we rotate up here, look how far away they are. Look how far away Haste is. He, he, he needs to be, you know, already having the squad rotations. It looks like Maynard may have already respawned a little bit there. But Garrison and then OPs, and that needs to happen. You know, unfortunately, the pressure is only going to be from the backside, so the, the defensive squads can just rotate on this. You know, I think Oreg and Vazlov are just hiding right now, and this is actually a nice play from them. Oh, no, Vazlov's killing. Why, 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 guys? Sometimes it's more important in a game to not kill, to hide. And I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but as a squad lead, if you are close to the enemy point and they don't know you're in a building, if you hide and they push past you and they do not clear each building, you can just then rotate and put pressure on behind. But if you engage with those kills and you allow them to know you're there and clear the buildings, you're, you're not doing your team a service, right? If you can stay hidden on a point and let them think they've cleared the point and then just immediately pop up, OP goes up a minute, two minutes later behind them and you attack the point, that's really like a, a hundred thousand IQ play. Unfortunately for Vazlov here, um, it pretty much looked like they didn't know he was there. He shot somebody in the back running by the building. If he had just stayed silent, laid down and not done anything and waited two minutes, popped an OP out, you know, he could be attacking the point right now with his squad. It looks like they think they've cleared it too. Oh my gosh, no way. They think they've cleared the building there. Vazlov is still alive. Please don't shoot Profix in the back. He's trying to shoot Profix in the back. Why? They they know you're not there. Unless Nice has put a satchel. Yeah, yes. Okay. So that's what it was. Nice put a satchel down to clear him out. Um, but still, like, Alpha's hiding. You know, as a, as a squad leader, if you can hide and stay alive to fight another day, I mean, that's probably more, more valuable than getting a few kills. All right, looking at the defensive line, Greyhounds have a tighter defensive line set up. Really no attack right now. Core is very wide. Greyhounds have pushed out to the west, clearing out those two attacking squads. So that's a nice play from them. Uh, however, they are starting to get pushed back a little bit here. Now, hopefully soon Greyhounds can cope, open up another front. Um, unfortunately, if it's just one front from like red zone, that's not gonna be enough for Core. You need to have two directions of attack and you need to put the pressure on from both sides. We'll see though. Uh, checking the map quickly to see the attack. Yeah, you can see a big red zone push from the south. 
Um, it looks like, who is this? This is Maynard. He's way back in the zone. I'm not too sure what he's doing so far back. Deep red zone. Gary here from Haste uh, on the front. Uh, defenses staying alive for now. Uh, you got Heiko there and Cobra on the defense with one, two being manned. Uh, Haste right here looks like a big spawn wave. So here comes the attack. Now, the issue again, like we said, the issue with this one pronged attack is that once it's sussed out, you know, this will be taken out fairly quickly. Looks like Maynard's having a lot of trouble on this north side. Now, this could be a smart play from Maynard here to maybe trick the defenders into thinking that they're, they're better off than they are. You know, and I, I didn't think of that, but if Maynard keeps respawning there and trying to push, that might make Soviet and Zim think, oh, they're not at our back lines. That they're trying to get there. They're not there. Um, we're doing good work. Let's keep pushing out this side and, and holding them on the north side. So that might be the thinking of that. Um, we're starting to see that core wide flank, though. Saint, nice. Again, looking to flank and pocket these forces uh, from the Greyhounds here. Now, no squad leads just yet with Saint, but once you see those, you know, the squad leads start coming in, then we have to get worried about this pocket. Uh, it, moreover, though, artillery of core just smashed this line. You saw this defensive line here from the Greyhounds? That is gone. That was a, a big line here on the cemetery. Now, there is a 76 to help out, but that 76 is taking shots. It's taking everything, essentially. Lots and lots of fire coming down on this 76 right now. Lots of satchels going down, too. Looks like Mr. Pink used his satchel up, though. Uh, Greyhounds are playing very, very strong Hell at Loose right now. I, I cannot overstate that, guys. Greyhounds coming into this one, you know, they're top five teams, top five world team for sure, for sure. But they, they've been beaten the last, you know, seven, eight times by core. But today they are playing out of their minds. And you know what? They don't even have their new acquisition, their new transfer of uh, PZ Chill Music and Burner Barge in the tank. They're not even playing. Imagine when that crew is live and playing with uh, the Greyhounds too. I mean, it's going to be a, a sight to see. And I, honestly, with with this game, I mean, they're playing at the level of core right now. You know, they, they had a little, their attack is slowing down a little bit. If we look back to the mid here, um, I mean, it is slowing down a little bit. You got Raup and Sharn, Sharnshi on the backside there. So pushing behind Hazed. Haste has to be careful that he doesn't get his OP cleared out from the back here. And that's what I, I think exactly what uh, Schnarr is doing right here. He's going to push in behind Haste and try to take out any OP that gets placed in front. But, I mean, there's only 35 minutes to go and it's a 3-2 for core. And you know what? There's a big attack coming here from 116. Now, Anthrox, I think that's a good play. Pushing to the back side here. Judge Fabster also going to be falling back. Core definitely better prepared for this attack. Uh, you can see, you know, trying to stall as fast as they can. Getting some squad leads back to deal with this. And this is going to be a very important 1v1 right here. Anthrox wins it. Oh, what an important kill that is for Anthrox. That is huge. Killing that squad lead, stopping him from getting an OP down on the south to kind of create a, a ring around the point right now. Um, Garrison, just to the north of point, you can see it right here. Or is that an OP? No, that is uh, that is a Gary. Oh, man, view distance is ridiculous. I have max view distance. It's not showing that Gary right there. Um... But still, defense is going well. This is a much better defense from Core. Uh, they have camped positions out. You know, Bates is in a good spot to, to shoot. You know, Calgan can't push across the road. He's going to clap Bates, actually, and push across anyways. But at least Core is sending bodies in. They're attacking from both sides. Um, you know, they're not just letting Greyhounds put the pressure on immediately. And the longer this goes on... The worse off it's going to be for the Greyhounds because that's not really big pressure right now. The, the uh, for Core, Core can deal with that. Okay, they haven't pulled a lot of bodies back. On the flip side, look how much closer Core is. You know they've claimed a couple hedgerows right now. They're still pushing down the hedgerows here. Zim is on the flank of this garrison. Zim killing bodies right now. He's got one, got two. Can he get the third? Manusa there. Well, if it was a garrison, it's gone. I believe it's just an outpost for now. I think those grenades have done the work there. Court clearing out another OP. 
and Corey's is just pushing closer and closer to point. They are getting ever, ever closer to this point right here. Uh, Greyhounds don't have a lot of hedges to defend from anymore. They really don't. Crusader, we've, we've talked about him in the past, mentioned him in on other streams here. He is up to Crusader things. He has found a gap in the line right here, and he's about to penetrate it and put up an OP for a full squad. Oh, AP mine says otherwise. The Crusader going to drop there. He's not going to sneak through the point. Nice little AP mine there from the Greyhounds. However, the north of this point is looking very, very rough right now. Nobody on the north side. No more hedgerows to defend from. The Greyhounds need to flank right here. All those forces on the right of your screen, Maddock, Redken, HP, Zero Hour, need to pull back a little bit and push across the hedgerow, kind of coming from behind. Coming from behind, Bommel, Zim, and Pink right here, if they want to hold this point. If they let Core get established on the north of their point, it's it's already over. <coughs> Excuse me there. Bommel trying a crazy play here. Uh-oh, speaking of crazy plays, we have a flanking Panzer IV. Panzer IV is flanking. Panzer IV to be 76. Uh, 76 one-shots Panzer IV to the hull. So, hopefully his P4 can find a hull down position to engage this tank, I think. No, he's not going to go down the right side, which would have offered him such. Now, the Panzer Force is going to have a peak right here. Smoke is up, so it might be blocking the back. Oh my god, that smoke. The Panzer Force has no clue where the 76 is right now. And the defending allies will spot this tank out. So one smoke is going to do a lot of work, unfortunately, for the Panzer IV. That is going to be him going down in a blaze of glory, or just a blaze, as the 76 spots him out. One or two smoke grenades, and I think that might have been Bommel's smoke grenade there in the field that cost that Panzer IV uh, the surprise in that, uh, and the kill possibly. So just funny how things work out right there. Uh, the smoke coming to bite them in the ass. Now. How can Core capitalize on this? Well, they've cleared off the point right now. They don't have too many bodies. I mean, Rude is the closest here. Now, where's the closest Gary? They do have a Gary right on Rude on the backside here. If Mosh can push off and take this Gary, though, that would be a huge play. I don't know if Rude knows about the bodies on point or Mosh here. Now, what do you do? Do you go for the Gary or do you go for the tank? I think Mosh right here goes for the t Gary. Uh, leaves the tank, maybe try for a uh, a takedown on without the satchel onto the Gary. He's going to lose that fight momentarily. Nate comes in. Nate takes Mosh out. Crisis averted there for Greyhounds, but like we said, it's getting close. It's getting very, very close. Unfortunately for Core, they just they didn't have any squad leads that got through the line. Medini, uh, TRAA, Mr. Pink, they're not squad leads. None of them can put those close proximity uh, OPs that Core love to utilize on the attack. And it's only a few bodies getting through. We have another tank fight coming up for you guys right now. It's going to be the 76 versus what I think is a Tiger. Tiger's really concealed right now. Tiger taking heavy damage right now. It's going to need to fall back and repair. Getting out of that one. Very close to death here is Core's Tiger. Now, they're going to be repairing. However, Belos is right on the backside of this. He's right here. Can he kill the crew? No, he's too busy with the infantry fight now. right now. That... That core tank is going to be really lucky with that one. Unfortunately, just no AT there. Now, look at the fight, though. Greyhound's staying in this one. They're being very persistent on the backside here. Maynard's made his way to point. Zarg's pushing from the front. Big respawn wave coming out from core. Uh, it's too bad Maynard doesn't have a satchel with him. He's going to be camping in the church all alone. Now, does he go for kills here, or does he just camp? He 
He's gonna be going for kills. Judge Fabs are gonna clear him out there. Wonder where that OP is. I'm thinking the OP is in the back of the courtyard right here, possibly, since Zark is there. That would make some make a little bit of sense. But Cora definitely having a, a difficult time with these Greyhounds on the back lines. Now, I'm not too sure if I love this southern focus of the attack. Uh, I would love to see some OPs on the uh, the eastern side and the western side. I don't I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Lots of bodies respawn on the back side here. The 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 Gary also on the north side still up. Oop. You can see the Gary there. Greyhound getting closer though. Speaking of getting closer here, Sledge has found his way around. Oh, I, I'm, I'm messing up this name 100%. I, I remember I was told exactly what the name was, but I cannot remember at this time. However, attacking OP going up. And here's where core really shines. Once they get two fronts open, it is so hard to resist that pressure. Now remember, there is a garrison. The, the main defensive garrison is in the next field to the southwest here. So that OP is going to be producing some respawns. And this garrison on the back is going to be going down. There's nobody defending it. I mean, the Gary's in trouble. Rambo knows. Rude knows. Gary's completely bypassed, though. Oh, no. Gary's completely bypassed here. Core push from the backside. The Gary's all right. They're just running open through the open field. Saint and Nice, both in the open field right here. They both drop. What were they thinking? Why? Why push through the open field here? Zim pushing onto the Gary. Greyhounds have a huge threat behind them right now. As Rambo's gonna go down there, we're gonna lose one OP here. Zim is almost onto this Gary. I don't think he, he knows about it though. There's the respawn right now. One, two, Zim drops two. Dopic is the last man alive. Can he protect the Gary? Can he save this one? No, he's gonna go up on the table and get shot in the back. Are there any more respawn waves? This could be the point where Core goes up 4-1. Oh, it's going to be so close here. It's going to be so close. Does the Gary fall? Yes, it does. No respawns. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. That is clear. Greyhounds have lost their back garrison. One core squad attacking from the backside, the east. Another from the north. Ray's in there on the north side. Uh, South's going to fall. Chris needs to get a new Gary up ASAP. ASAP, ASAP. Now, there's smoke on the north side. Uh, I'm thinking this is a distraction, though. There's nothing on the north side right now. I mean, Saint and Nice are going to try to push the north side. Uh, a nice collapse here, though. Got to gotta give a credit where it's due. Belos, Gid, Dopix all collapsing onto the backside here. Going to clear out the attacking OP. Uh, however, that has let Crusader, Zoom, Nero, three squad leads in from the front. Everybody fell off the front line here, and Kor has just waltzed into point. Oh my god, as the as the Greyhounds are worrying about the back of the point, they get masturbated off the front. Oh no. Core is now in possession of point with three squad leaders here. This is horrible, horrible, horrible for Greyhounds. They do not have any position on their fourth point right now. They need to send so many bodies back to deal with this. And if Zoom, Crusader, and Nero can get OPs down and get respawns in, that's a lot of bodies to push off the strong point. Greyhounds are in a lot of trouble right now. The classic uh, bait and switch going down here from Core. Core is going to follow this up with a red zone, Gary, and it's going to be so hard for the Greyhounds here to get off, uh, get back onto point. 
Bombing run needs to come right away. Maybe defensive airhead also to follow up on that bombing run so they can get enough spawns into point. Airhead, offensive airhead coming down here from core. They pulled the gun with this one. They knew what they were doing. Airhead goes down on point. Where is the arty? Where is the Greyhound's arty? Let's check the map really quick. There is nobody on the arty. They are killed off the arty. Huge timing attack coming down from core. Airhead has landed. And this is going to be the fourth point for the for for core. They have nothing. The Greyhounds have have a Gary in the field. There's the bombing run. However, it's an attacking bombing run. Core. All they needed was a bait and switch play to make this cap work. With minimal resistance, they walk straight into point. Airhead on top of that. Huge spawn wave is almost instantly deleted there. Wow. And just like that, it's going to be 4-1 core with 22 minutes to go. Looking to close out this game and take their German Cup victory. My gosh. Absolute masterclass, tactical masterclass. Guys, you can't... Uh, we can't underscore how brilliant of a play that was by Core. They not only uh, had the airhead timing, that airhead was planned in advance. You know, that whole attack from the back was a bait. Right? Lots of bodies going to die here in this in this bombing room for the defenders, but they just have no position. No position to do anything. You know, the timing attack on the arty, the attack from the back, the rotation to the front with the airhead, all timed perfectly and executed flawlessly. Core. Going up 4-1 here. Um, and now what can the Greyhounds do? They've come back into this game a few times already. Can they come back again? That is the real question. Only 21 minutes to go. Not a lot of time to cap this fourth and then cap the midpoint. You know, I mean, I think this is a, is a write-off. But I mean, Greyhounds are making a, making a big effort to get back into this one. They're making a big, big push from the south side right now. Uh, core though, it, it definitely in the driver's seat. Where's the defensive airhead? Where's that reinforce coming? I don't think it's going to be enough though. Now 80, more than 80%, 90% cap progress. This is going to be the 4-1 here. For a second, it had me thinking, maybe they could do it. Maybe they could come back into that one and defend the point, but no. Force position, just too strong there. It is 4-1. Now... 20 minutes to go. It takes four minutes to cap both points. So in reality, it's 16 minutes. Greyhounds have 16 minutes with uninterrupted cop caps. Excuse me, uninterrupted cups. I even speak in English. Uh, they have to cap without stopping for four minutes to come back into this one. Obviously that's easier said than done, but that's just the reality of hell at loose. If they are not 100% capped at the end of this one, they will still lose the point on the 3-2. And the game. Now, they have a lot, of, a lot of bodies around the point here, just not a lot of squad leads. Rude, really the only squad lead. Belos also there, but... They're, they're getting pushed slowly, but surely you can see a nice flank here from Judge Fabster's squad pushing down the back of the Greyhound line here, looking to eliminate any counterattack or any possibility of a counterattack. Uh, if we look to the fifth point here, we got Russo to firm the last point for the Greyhounds. It's not an easy point to attack. It really isn't. There's a lot of open fields. It can very easily be uh, dealt with. There is a little flank going on here from Werner Voss and Yoshi on the backside. This is a very common place now. Cores already used their airhead back here. So they won't be able to, to airhead out this field, which we've seen, you know, a, a bunch of times in different competitive matches and then flank from the backside. Uh, there's definitely a timer for another airhead. Core usually love to finish their games at 5-0. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be possible though, with only 18, 18 minutes to go. Just, uh, I, I'm, I'm still kind of in awe with that kind of bait and switch there um, from core, attacking from the back. Uh, I'm surprised Greyhounds left their front so undefended. Quite a few kills from uh, Klex right there onto the core. Gary, Mock, looking for some more kills himself. Let's get nice and tight with Mock here as he... Uh, Looks to clear off the Gary for any more bodies here, potentially, sitting on point. Oh, 
Oh my god, medic damage. <laughs> I'm sorry for catching that on uh, on film, Maddock there, buddy. There we go, second one's a charm. Spieler and Raisin both gonna spawn in here. All three gonna drop, HP getting a bunch of kills. Yeah, guys, also in the chat, you know, uh, Calgan cheats. Yeah, I get out of here with that stuff, man. Don't, don't be, don't be a toxic person. In my chat, please, don't do that. Don't be a dick, you know? Like, Bance is one thing, if, if, especially if it's funny. Um, but, you know, if, if you're just, you know, being a dick to somebody, don't do that. Uh, Core pushing out here, you can see them pushing. Look at Mosh, Blue Tears, dude. This is what I love to see from Core. I love how wide they get. It's so beautiful. Like, if you're, if you're a team watching this, and also the Greyhounds, look how wide they're getting too. But more from Core, look as we zoom out, look at look at how wide they are. They have two to three guys on every trench, on every trench row, on every piece of cover. You need to do that in Hell at least. You can't be compact. As soon as you get compact, you get surrounded. Now, that being said, on the south side, a few bodies did drop Kyle there, getting some kills. But getting, it's so important to get your your troops out in those trenches to get your OPs up in the trenches and to get really wide as a defense. Making yourself wide, getting as many shooting angles as possible. Zoom right up and close here with this steward. His buddy Nero gonna get dropped. Gonna need some AT to clear this one out. Flex defense steward here. Nice to see. Unfortunately, Willie and Blue Terror, neither of them are ATs or, or have a satchel. So uh, they're gonna have to wait for somebody. Oh. Or not, you know, the Stuart Cannon can just uh, eat them alive like that. Greyhound's going to be pushing out here. A little armored column, 75s. Two 75s in a, in a row. We got Basu, PKX, and Mabitse, and Phil Beaker and Sengir here pushing out in their 75s. Look and see if they can't kickstart a little counterattack. Only 15 minutes to go. Not a lot of time right here. Look at this defense from Core though. They, they absorb the pressure. They let Greyhounds into the mix, and then they come in from behind. Saints just terrorizing uh, the front line of the Greyhounds right now. He's got a few kills already. Looking for some more right here. Getting three, finally gets dropped by Black Swan here, but it just takes the bodies that you can use the attack away. Now, you know, Oreg, Black Swan, Dopix, they're gonna have to flank north and deal with this. And you know what? Profex, Medini, Pink, Judge Fabster, and Ralph are not gonna be easy to take out by any means. But you know, they're so persistent, they'll keep attacking into the side of this push from the Greyhounds and really deny the ability uh, to put pressure on point. It's going to be really important here for these 275s to push also with their infantry, to have infantry push with them. I'm not too sure where the tiger went, if he's still lurking around. But uh, wherever he is, he's going to be on the phone right now with the defenders over here. I'm sure he'll be responding very soon. However, two tanks with no infantry is not a winning formula. I would have preferred probably if uh, if the Greyhounds pushed a little to the south and pushed through the field. Uh, first tank going to go down there. I wonder what that was. Where Where is the... Is there an AT gun? Oh, this might be an AT gun here. Yeah, it's going to be an AT gun with Edu and Bommel. No? No, it's not. Well... Bama wants to build an AT gun. A dude's waiting to build an AT gun. Okay, so what killed... What killed that, that tank then? I'm not too sure. Greyhounds, time's running out, man. Nine minutes left uh, to start capping. And remember, they have, a, they have to have a continuous cap on both points. If they stop at any time, they will lose the game here. It's only a 3-2 win that matters. So really, all anything past a 3-2 is just padding right now. I'm still at a loss for what actually killed that first 75. Maybe... Oh, no. It's Jay Thompson right here. Hello. 
AT gun is up. Jay Thompson is on the, the shooty, pointy end of it. Gonna be looking to make the second 75 pay. He has no idea. Really nice spot for this AT gun here. Very hard to hit. And down goes the tank. Wow. I don't even know if the uh, if the 75 can see anything there. That's a crazy angle. AT for core. Kills two 75s there on the back and potentially secures the victory here. Bombing run gonna come down. That is gonna kill everybody for the Greyhound. Oh my gosh, that is a, a crazy bombing run. How many bodies? 12, 13, 14, 15? Oh my gosh. Well, the Greyhounds just got absolutely deleted and now Core is going to be pushing off the point here and trying to secure this win. 12 minutes to go in this one. Not 12 minutes to start capping though. Uh, and, and with that, oh man, the win is, is almost completely out of the sails of that attack. No tanks, half the infantry. Core is feeling invigorated, able to push off point, pushing through the fields. I wouldn't advise it there, Bomo. I don't know quite, quite why. <laughs> If he makes it across this. Yeah, he, he was never going to make it across that. <laughs> I, I don't know why people love to push to the middle of a field. Unless it's a weed field, man. You're just opening yourself up to get shot so easily. Uh, but still, I mean, it buys more time for Core here. Core even going to be putting some attacking pressure on. 76 pulling up. I wonder if he'll be able to take out that AT gun. Um... We'll see right now. Again, this is where I think the Greyhound should have tried to push through. If you're gonna push the infantry through an open space, you gotta do it through one of these wheat fields. We got two targets shooting back at it, two tigers it looks like. 76 does not know where that second tiger is. Finally finds him, it's too little too late. The second tiger takes out the 76 there. Now it looks like it's gonna secure another tank victory. And not only that, but the game here, core. Taking out all the tanks of 116th. That's going to be Holsby, Jetty, and George Lee. And the Greyhounds really have no other choice other than to like airhead the point with Artie, possibly. I mean, even even then, like y y you have to take two points to to win this. Even if you airhead take the point, you've probably used everything you have, uh, and you just have nothing left for the for the last one. So, ten minutes to go. Six minutes to start capping. That is the timer that the Greyhounds are on right now. Core is starting to put some pressure onto this last point, though, of uh, Russo de Ferme. You got Nero, Scav, Willy, Crusader, Anthrox all pushing front line here. Another 76 comes out for the Greyhounds. However, look how close this core squad is to the garrison on the backside. Willy's going to turn around the corner and find spawns. How many kills can he get? Well, that's going to be up to him and how good he is in shooting. Garrison going to be marked out there by Willie. He's just waiting for the spawns. There's the spawn one. Well, only one. Bosch Peaks gets one himself. Nades are flying. Another one drops. Mosh falls. Willie, last one alive there. Oreg chilling, hiding for his life on the backside of the Gary. I have a clip a while back of Zim doing the same thing. There we go. He pulled the last kill out. And Zim got like five kills, I think. Every bullet in his Garand at the time they were playing allies killed somebody on the spawn. And I just put little pings on it and uploaded it as like a short or something. It was pretty funny to watch. Uh, Scout's going to try and get some kills there. He gets three. It's pretty much a shooting gallery here on the backside. Bodies are just getting absolutely dropped. Who? I wonder who that is. Because a few bodies were falling there and nobody had a shooting angle onto that. That was very odd there. A few bodies died as soon as they spawned in. But I can't see anybody who would have an angle onto that garrison. I can't I, I, I can't see anybody who would. A uh, big respawn wave coming in here from the OP. <clears throat> Nero, Medini, Willy. All dropping. Looks like another tank going down there for the Greyhounds. Is that a tank? No. Something else exploding. Maybe an AT gun.
Hammer time indeed. Greyhounds need to do something right now. They have about one minute and 55, uh, sorry, not one minute, two minutes and 55 remaining. They lose another tank on the left side here. Oh, that's just a Greyhound though. 76 is still up. However, there is a stack of two Tigers playing together on this west side. So that's not going to be very easy to, to kill here. I think the Greyhounds have to be thinking half tracks right now. Um, if they can kill these 270... Uh, oh my god, look at this. They don't really have a lot going, though. They don't have a lot going at all. Right now, Core is just peaking with two Tigers, right? They're pulling one up. And then they push one back, and then they push the second up. And it's a 2v1. I don't think the 76 really has a chance in that 2v1. Core playing it safe, though. Not... Not going too aggro with their tanks. You know, take some damage, fall back, repair. Very standard stuff. Greyhounds successfully do push off that little attack. However, that pressure on the backside is just denying the ability for the Greyhounds to put any any kind of attack onto Bazanta Creek. Speed pushing in though. But he needs to get like a, an OP or a Gary up. I mean, he already has an OP up. He needs to get a Gary up. He needs to kill Schnarr and Raup and, uh, I mean, Airhead at this point. Red Zone Gary is not going to cut it. I mean, Quar has the defenders back. If there was only like one squad lead, though, it's the thing. Only one squad lead here. I think they're going to be going for an Airhead. Uh, you can see Artie Marker going down in the field. Speed did get by Schnarr. Very close proximity to the core garrison. It's just too slow. We got we got a minute 36 left. And there has to be continuous cap on both points. Now, in order for the Greyhounds to win this, they need a continuous cap. Speed, uh, he doesn't have... I don't think they have it. I think I'm pretty confident in saying core are going to be the champions of the 2022-2021 German Cup. Taking it 4-1 versus Greyhounds. Now, there is five minutes to go in this one. So, Core could potentially go 5-0, but there just isn't the time now for the Greyhounds to make two consecutive caps. And you know what? The Greyhounds put up such a good fight. Unfortunately, they got baited off that, that fourth point there. I was just unfortunate they left everyone off the point a lot to just waltz right in there. Oh, man. A court did lose some tanks here. They have lost one already. I'm surprised core isn't going for broke here, going for a 5-0. Airhead bombing run, mass push, shove the shove the the tank in. I mean, the tank is fighting a 76 right now. That's camping. You luck. They're just camping on the other side of this hedgerow here. But with four minutes and five seconds to go, and no cap progress coming out, Core is gonna officially be crowned the champions of. Uh, of the German Cup. Congratulations. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I believe most people were picking Core off the bat just because of uh, their track record. But I mean, I, I don't think I, anyone expected the Greyhounds to fight this hard. You know, and if they hadn't got baited off the point there, I think they really could have challenged. You know, unfortunately, Mabitze and Hayes were a little slower the second time pushing around the backside. If they'd only maybe sped that up before their, their frontline forces got pocketed, they might have been able to pull it off again. But uh, you got to give them credit for that. They took you know the cap off of Core twice today. Core had to had to really earn this one, um, and, and then they just pulled a crazy crazy bait and switch out of the out of the bag on the fourth point too.
for pressuring this, well, backside garrison, which was a garrison. I guess it's been already taken out. Now only an OP. Thirty seconds left to cap on this point. We'll see, of course, able to put some cap progress on the board for uh, Rousseau de Ferme. Don't think they'll be able to. Greyhounds have a pretty good position here. Have a couple OPs up around point, but definitely now just fighting for style points. A little bit of cap progress goes in. We'll see if uh, Core maybe orders a, a bombing run or an airhead onto the back here. There's the bombing run. Are we going to see a? Uh, an airhead come down too. Core looking to end this one on a high with a 5-0. Uh, at the same time, the bombing run goes down. The 76 drops on the front too. TRAA Pink Raisin all pushing in, trying to make this one a 5-0 at the end, make it a memorable end to this one. With one minute to go, though, there's not going to be enough time for that. This one's going to end 4-1. Uh, you need at least a minute for half the cap, and since we're already at the one-minute mark, there's definitely not enough time for that. It's all for style points now. Still, you got to give it to... Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just noticed the Crusader coming in with the half-track to the last point. you got to give it to the Greyhounds. They fought a really brave fight, and you know what? The gap is closing. The gap is really closing, able to take points off core, uh, able to deny them the midpoint off the bat. That's not something we've seen a lot of teams being able to do. Um, really being in the realm of, of just only a few teams like uh, Blacklist, WTH. Um, and now 116th though. I'm sure when DC gets their 50 man, they'll be up there too. Uh, <laughs> Crusaders just going for a joyride around the back of the point, honking a little bit here, here and there. Uh, he's just having fun right now. This one's over. Core winning the German Cup with a 4-1 score. Definitely not indicative of the full match, though. Greyhound's putting up such a good fight there. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take a little break after this one ends and come back. Uh, welcome, Odo. Uh, unfortunately, that one not going your guys' way, but hey, uh, you know, that was a great game. Overall, how did it feel playing that? Did you guys think you could stay so close to core for so long in that game? It was a fantastic game. We had some some struggles uh, at the start mm. um, with our tanks. But yeah, we were also be able to cap the mid cap. Okay. Uh, but our biggest problem was we couldn't take off their artillery. That was mm. our main problem. And they did such a good job. I have to say it, and yeah, but yeah, the recap of from from the mid cap from the church was great. It was very 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 nice. Yeah, and yeah, the, the flank around back looked good. It, it looked like you guys were trying to do that again the second time, but just it, it wasn't going fast enough. You know, a mm -hmm. core really identified where you guys were on the back side of the church, and then uh, kind of encircled you guys, and then Maynard and uh, uh, what well, I can't remember who the other squad lead was on the back side. Yeah, yeah. Has it. Yeah, they weren't able to get behind the point. I think Core put a lot more players to defense and was able to stop that from happening. But still, it was it was really good play. Uh, kind of walk me through what happened, though, on the fourth point. Because it looked like there was an attack starting from the back. You guys pulled off and yeah. all went back. And then kind of Core just kind of walked into the point. There wasn't really a huge fight for the point there. Was that just a like a miscommunication on the team or, or what happened? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it was a miscommunication. Uh, I either would say the artillery just completely hold, uh, hold us out of the point. Okay. And yeah, <clears throat> the, the cap is so close to their um, red uh, part, so they can easily place the garrison and just move two meters inside the hut cap. Yeah. That's a hut, hut uh, point at this, uh, mid, uh, at this fourth cap. Mm. And yeah, if, if they are able to place their OPs and garrison so close and mm. can just walk in, with yeah. the artillery is just shut us down. Yeah, we yeah, weren't yeah. able to to spawn at our garrisons. 
you guys did win the 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 start though. You won the three two off the start. And you were able to come back into the game. Was there ever a point in that game where you thought, "Hey, we could actually be doing this here. We could actually be beating Core." Yeah, definitely. At the at uh, at the recap mm-hmm. when we recapped the third point. Yeah, uh, we were also as good as able to cap their fourth fourth point as well. Yeah, I, I guess saw. it was three four um, of of their cap. Mm. But then they was were able to just uh, push it back, and yeah. Was there ever a, a, a point where you maybe thought about airheading that fourth point to reinforce your your team over there? Uh, was that ever a possibility? Just dropping the airhead in, and then maybe trying to reinforce those guys who were already on point, or? Uh, no, I don't think so because they had so many pressure on our mid cap. So oh, okay. if if we throw their airhead, it it either. Uh, backfired and they had a really really good uh airhead um defense yeah 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 um we tried we tried at the fourth point Mm -hmm. at five minutes around to to airhead inside Mm. and to to flip it again yeah to to get get this point and then instantly go for the uh, mid cap Mm. but yeah they they destroyed the airhead so yeah there was no no getting inside and then yeah we also saw core use their airhead too um they used it on the midpoint on the north side there you guys were luckily able to get that and then they also airheaded on the fourth point when they went up 4-1 uh i could tell I, when i saw the airhead i knew it was a planned play from them they attacked mm-hmm. from the back put pressure on the gary and there wasn't a lot of people on the front it was a timing attack because they also attacked your arty at the same time and they also dropped the airhead they they hit the the uh, bombing run at the same time and they attacked with three squads up the middle too so it was a, it was a crazy attack to see but uh okay. but yeah you got you guys did a really good job you know uh I, I i think i'm not only speaking for myself but a lot of people coming into this one when i ask them say who's who's gonna win they say oh yeah yeah it, it yeah greyhounds is a good team but like course gonna win i don't think we expected to see you guys put out that much of a threat and I, how, how does that make you feel going into the future with with the greyhounds do you think you guys are steadily improving do you guys think you have a chance you know i know you picked up uh, a crew you picked up the the nemesis tank crew from the 38th so you're gonna have them yes. um were they they weren't playing today though were they um they are aren't uh, able to play uh because oh, okay. of the we, rules we, don't, so. we wasn't we wasn't sure about the rules okay and uh if we are not wrong they aren't allowed to play at the season as well yeah we will uh, check it but um they they played at the qualifier and so mm. we don't know how that is uh, because it was a, clo- a qualifier so yeah, maybe uh, yeah okay. yeah correct all right all right yeah but, so that makes but the future must must be feeling good for you guys picking up them, um, and just with the with the play with the team it is now. Like, uh, do, you, do you think you maybe in the future will be able to compete with Core more? Like you guys were trading points with them today, and what does we that say so. for for you know WTH in the seasonal blacklist teams like that? Yeah, we we prepare much much better for our games at yeah. the moment. Um, I come back to the tactical part. I was uh, retired a little bit. <laughs> And uh, yeah, wasn't wasn't that happy about Hell at Loose, but uh, since one about uh, half a half a month, yeah. I come back and yeah, we are trying to to get the technical part uh, up again and to improve it, so we are able to to uh, win against Core. That's definitely a point for us. Um, that's our point to go for, and uh, yeah, we want to fight the the big two, Core and uh, Viteha. That's our plan mm-hmm. for the next month. Well, and Blacklist too. I mean, Blacklist. Blacklist is a weird team. They they've beat WTH uh, a few like a week ago, I believe, uh, on okay. Foy. But they also they're very inconsistent. Like they're, they're definitely a top team. They can play with Core. They can play with you guys. They can play with WTH. But sometimes they just have that inconsistency there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll see if they can play with you guys. Any any uh, uh, predictions though going forward? You guys, uh, how are you feeling about the seasonal? This week, do you think uh, you guys can take it? We really hope that we get to the half final, uh, to yeah. the semi final. That's that's our definitely plan. And yeah, let's see how the the match at the Sunday uh, will work. Uh, okay. We play against ESPT, against yeah. the Incham tr- um, group. I think that's the strongest and, yeah. NA team. I think that's the strongest. Yeah, NA definitely. Team. There's there's no other good NA team for me. <laughs> <laughs> so for it is, but yeah, there's there's only one one really good NA team. 
I saw Muck Snapper in the chat, so he's he's gonna be <laughs> getting for you guys, I'm sure, soon. The one of the Trirex players for for golf, but uh, I, I mean, yeah, TL's there. Uh, Trirex is there, um, but definitely, I think the experience and the the skill with the shooters really rests with the with yeah. that. What, what are they called? What do you call them? Like the threesome, the ESPT, yeah. B, BHB, and OP. Um, but yeah, anyway, right. th- thank you, uh, Bodo, for, for joining us. And unfortunately, no about problem. the result today, but I think you can take a lot of positives from that in, in the way your team played. Thanks, man. Oh, no Hope worries. Hope we see us next. Ciao, ciao. Yeah, ciao. Welcome to uh, Werner Voss coming together to join us here after the game for a little interview. Um, from your perspective, how did, how did that match go? What do you think? Well, well <laughs> it was a hard match. Uh, the enemy was very strong. Uh, at least we had at the beginning some problems. Uh, was bringing the Reekings behind the enemy lines, and also uh, till the mid cap fight at the time after there were some communication problems, mm-hmm. as maybe was seen at the map when the defense jumped back too late. Uh, yeah, but. Um, at least it works. We are happy that we won the fight, that we won the game, that we won the German Cup. Uh, yeah. No, it was nice. I noticed, I guess you guys weren't expecting, obviously, to, to win the race to the midpoint. Did you expect to do a little better off the off the start, though, to, to take that 3-2 initially? Was that an mm, expectation of you guys? No, I mean, it's uh, St. Marie Cleese, uh, <laughs> the, the church. It's American fav- favorite. Yeah. Um, we don't plan to get the first cap. We, to be honest, we never plan to get the first cap. If it happens, it's fine. If not, uh, yeah, we we take it uh, to uh, the recap. It's not, okay. it's not it's not a problem normally. And after you guys took out the first cap, um, it went up three two. I could see you you trying to flank around and pocket that force. Um, however, they had also you know I noticed they'd got around behind you guys, got some ops up. Is that what you were talking about when you said you guys weren't quick quick enough to redeploy? You didn't uh, really read that push from them from the backside early enough, so you couldn't get enough bodies back there to to contain it. Well, the problem is it's uh, the map. It's a city map, and also was. Uh, the wheat fields and the bushes and uh, stuff like that. Everywhere, an uh, enemy can sneak through. Yeah. And it not you cannot play somewhere at least like uh, for example Utah Beach. Mm. There, 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 one guy can have an overview about a whole field, two hundred meters or more, and here. Yeah, you can be fifty meter away or twenty meter away from the enemy, and you're not able to see him. Yeah, um, that's maybe a problem because we have many good guys at long range. We have also awesome guys at close combat, but the sneak through is a thing that's a problem of maps like Saint Marie Glees. Yeah, indeed. Um, I noticed though. Uh, so. Y- you know, you guys fought, you took the midpoint, you lost the midpoint, you took it back. And then again, uh, I noticed you guys changed up your defense a little bit. You had a few more guys on the backside kind of looking for that same attack. It did come in. A few more bodies were committed. But uh, this time, you guys also on the front of the point were able to pocket um, the, the remaining attack forces from the Greyhounds and, and eliminate them. That kind of was the end of the threat there. Um, going on to the fourth point, you guys had an interesting attack. I saw an attack on the backside. I think it was you were in a 1v1 with uh, with Kyle there uh, as the recon. You actually lost that. He took the Gary, um, but the attack kind of drew so many people back to try and deal with that threat that you guys kind of just walked in the front door. Do you want to talk a little bit about that attack onto the fourth point? How did that was that all planned? It looked like you had an airhead ready to go bombing run. Uh, what, what, uh, what were you guys talking about when you attacked the fourth point? Well, it was not planned like that. I mean, we never planned with the Red Zone Garrison because it's like this time, if you get them up, uh, the chance is very high that the enemy spotted the supply drop or that they are still there and blocked the garrison. Mm. If it's spawnable, it's okay. It's good. It's mm. very good. But if not, if it's not, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not no problem. It may, and also with the, the airhead, the same thing. If the airhead works, it's good. If not, 
no problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the fight, the fight was a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened. I, I get three hit marks and he was still alive. Yeah, he just he he like I have it. You can watch it on the replay. Um, he he laid down and he just stood still and you were shooting, 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 and then you flanked around and he was just waiting. And I think he heard your footsteps by the Gary. He yep. went to check if he was taking the Gary, and then he just like one, one tapped you. But I mean, yeah, that yeah. was the problem. Like <laughs> because I don't know, um, we have a we have a new game server, a new event server, and I don't know the f we had never had problems with that. The first time we had the problem, someone complained about the server performance was Tuesday, mm. uh, and now. I see trucks rubber banding and tanks <laughs> rubber banding and, and shots not connecting. Mm. Like like I said, it, uh, I remember this scene exactly because I gave him three or four hit marks. I get three or four yeah, hit I, marks with DMP at, at his agree. close range. I thought he was going to die. I, I, he came over the fence and I'm like, okay, he's dead. And it's like, wait, no? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That, that, that was... Ah, I was tilled at this moment <laughs> because I got I got the hit marks. Okay, and so yeah, okay, easy. He's down. <laughs> I, I I can go back to the enemy artillery, and then he killed me. And mm. I thought, only what the fuck? I got the hit marks, and he's still alive. <laughs> oh well, I mean, in the end of the day, though, that like it, it, when you reach watch the game, you can see they pulled so many guys back, and they left the front open, and that you guys had like a nice timing attack, and from there it was just uh, smooth sailing on the point. Uh, I, I want to congratulate you though, in, in core for winning the German Cup. Um, and, and you know, looking forward, uh, are, are, does it, does this worry you at all going forward that you know one sixteenth is getting closer in in the in the gap between you guys? You guys aren't you know making those thirty minute games anymore. They're actually really making you earn the games, or is that something you 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 like the competition? Well, um, I talked once with another streamer about our uh, games, and he said that our games. Going all games and all we put all games together. They are over fifty minutes. Um, it's only the it's only the thing. Uh, enemies like the Crayhounds or next time Trigger. They're good. They're good teams. Uh, we never expect that we will beat them in thirty minutes. Yeah. Uh, it was also possible that they win this time. So yeah, I mean. I, I, I... Uh, going in, I had the expectation that Core probably when I think most people would say that you guys are probably rated number one in the world uh, for a good reason in the 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 consistency and the quality of your play. But after you know Greyhounds took the first point, you guys took it back. But then when I saw they weren't you know they weren't rolling over, they were fighting, they were they were winning sometimes the 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 FPS battles, especially in the city there. And then they took it back. I was thinking, wow, this is this is definitely going to be a, a game for sure. And it, it was in the end. So so congrats to that. And, and thank you for, for providing the game for us. And uh, congrats on winning. I don't know if there's anything you want to mention uh, to your guys in core or to the, the community as a whole. But uh, you can take it away now. Yeah, last words. I hope the community will grow um, as it's doing now and get bigger and bigger. More teams, more leagues, more seasonals and then see you on the battlefield yeah for sure see you again on yep. the battlefield thank you so much yep. for, for joining Bye. us